Hi. Thank you. First off, thank you to Abby for asking me to do this. I've always thought that my relationship to God, prayer, and Judaism has been much more deeply affected by my identity as a woman and a feminist than by my identity as a lesbian. That's probably because I became a feminist long before I recognized myself as a lesbian, but also because I don't experience my being a lesbian as my primary Jewish or other identity. Still, preparing these remarks has led me to think about this a little bit differently, as I guess you'll hear. In any case, I do have stories to tell, and the through line of all of them, really, is how much things have changed. As I think back on my coming out, whether to myself or to others, I remember how incredibly scary that felt, especially within the Jewish community, even the alternative progressive Jewish communities of which I was a part. So let me locate myself there first to provide some context. I joined the New York Chavurah, a freestanding alternative Jewish community in 1970. Together, the 20 or so members davened on Shabbat morning and holidays, created classes and studied, went on retreats once a month, and protested the Vietnam War. It was in the New York Chavurah that I first brought feminist perspectives to Judaism. After experiencing what felt like our invisibility as women during a Shabbat morning davening, my friend Dina Rosenfeld and I started a class to study the position of women in Judaism that became Ezrat Nashim, the first Jewish feminist organization of the modern period. Some months later, in March 1972, a, about a million of us crashed the annual convention of the Rabbinical Assembly calling for counting women in minyanim, allowing women to have aliyot, admitting women to rabbinical and cantorial schools, allowing women to be full members of synagogues, and a raft of other demands. You can read them on the Jewish Women's Archive website. I wrote and spoke in New York and around the country, demanding full access for women to Jewish life, study, prayer, etc., and calling for the full inclusion of single people into Jewish communal life. I was a regular attendee at inter gatherings along the East Coast, but although I began coming out as a lesbian in the mid-1970s in Northampton, Massachusetts, where I lived, for almost the next 10 years, I was very hesitant to say word one about that to anyone in the extended Jewish Chavura community. I cared about that connection and those relationships too much to risk losing them, and that's what I feared would happen if they knew. In 1980, I conquered my fear, took the plunge, and came out to a member of that larger community. She said to me, Martha, more people know than you think. I felt a huge surge of relief. As I said at the time, I had been thinking that I was carrying a big garbage bag around on my back and then realized it had been clear plastic all the time. That began, however, slowly, a whole new phase. In the late 1970s, a non-Jewish friend and I had offered workshops addressing anti-Semitism for Jewish lesbians and their friends to the lesbian community in Northampton. Then, with some trepidation, another friend and I brought similar ally work to the National Chavara Institute in 1983 offering a workshop for gays, lesbians, and allies. During the 1983-84 academic year, which I spent in Boston, I joined with others to offer workshops to Hillel directors on overcoming homophobia in the Jewish community. We called ourselves Yitzia, our probably not very apposite translation of coming out. And yet, in 1986, when Judith and I wanted to create a Jewish ceremony to mark our commitment, and to hold it in our synagogue in Northampton. We followed the advice of friends in our Chavura there, who included the co-presidents of the synagogue board, not to ask permission of the rabbi or the board, but simply to request the use of the auditorium for a private event. We didn't want it to become the focus of a congregational policy decision. We just wanted to be able to celebrate our relationship in a Jewish context. I haven't said much about my connection to God or prayer. Interestingly, probably not surprisingly to anyone but myself, 
I think it was freeing myself to come out as a lesbian in the Jewish community that actually enabled me to deepen my connection to God and prayer. It was in the context of Benodesh, a Jewish feminist spirituality collective, that I began exploring questions of spirituality and sexuality and spirituality and politics, both of which have been core aspects of my Jewish identity to this day. I started talking about a concept of wholeness, which I now recognize as deeply spiritual and deeply Jewish, but which I had not really thought about or experienced before because I did not feel I could be fully present in the Jewish community with all of who I was. What we articulated in Benodesh was that politics is the work we do to make the world safe for us to experience our spirituality. Or to put that another way, one that seems especially relevant at this moment, it's the work we do to allow everyone to be in the world safely in the fullness of who they are. It's a commitment I'm glad to renew here and now. Thanks.